My name is Iram Arf. I work as the Migration Policy Advisor for International Trade Union Confederation. We work on uh, decent work, freedom of association, right to organize, labor protections, equality, and of course migration concerns labor uh, and, and work. As trade unions, we have also in our unions migrant workers themselves. Unfortunately, we see the way currently, globally and at regional and national levels, migration is being governed, is uh, exposing migrant workers to uh, exploitation and human rights violations. Uh, as civil society uh, and uh, part of that uh, delegation as trade unions, we will be uh, advocating for dialogue. That will be the key thing for us, social dialogue around migration issues. Uh, and in relation to that, of course, freedom of association, right to organize and collective bargaining is really key for migrant workers. This is the way they can ensure to advocate for themselves their, their rights and and uh, raise the uh, difficulties, the rights violations they are facing uh, and ensure that they can have access to them. In addition to that, we see a lack of access to social protection as a key issue that migrant workers are facing. Um, unfortunately, uh, lack of dialogue around these issues in the migration field is causing some solutions to be uh, not determined uh, as quick as uh, enough. We're seeing uh, migrant workers facing um, exploitation uh, during their recruitment, ha having to pay exorbitant fees, for example, which causes them to be uh, debt bondage situations where they can't leave exploitative work conditions. Uh, many migrant workers were in the uh, forefront of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, while this has created some recognition in uh, governments and in societies of the important role they have uh, and certain measures were at times taken to ensure, for example, they can have access to health care uh, and uh, their, their um, uh, visas can be extended, uh, work permits and residence permits can be extended. But on the other hand, we've seen also uh, many other pr uh, protection issues migrant workers face during the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, some of them have not been able to access protections against the virus. Uh, some of them have faced uh, wage theft, uh, being stuck in countries, uh, either not being able to return to work in destination or being able to go back home. Uh, with climate change, uh, people are finding it uh, difficult to continue living in certain locations and having to move, uh, but also at the same time having to exp uh, accept um, uh, either pathways or work uh, that is not uh, dignifying or ensuring decent work standards. Uh, one concern we have around that is uh, uh, the, the projection of migration as, a, as an adaptation strategy. Um, migration does contribute to adaptation, it does contribute to development, but we do not want to see as this as the sole uh, policy area that there is investment, that there is uh, attention, uh, because also migration does have a lot of costs for people who are migrating or the communities uh, that uh, are losing uh, the people who are migrating away. Uh, so this needs to be part of a holistic approach to the climate change uh, and uh, needs of both destination and origin and transit countries, communities, and most importantly, migrant workers and migrants themselves uh, be at the center of that discussion. This is the 14th uh, summit of the Global Forum on Migration and Development uh, and we are very happy to be here to be able to uh, share our experiences, our knowledge um, and uh, bring the data we collect from the uh, ground um, about the situation migrant workers in particular but migrants in general face. Uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a shrinking space for civil society uh, because uh, civil society members are here, they are ready to cooperate, to uh, find solutions together, uh, but unfortunately many of their voices will be missing in, in that dialogue, which is, which is um, a sad uh, loss.